The following is distributed by the Berean Call. The doctrine of salvation is a critical concept of the Christian faith. Dave and T.A. continue their exposition of this topic now in Understanding the Scriptures. Tom? Our topic for this segment, Understanding the Scriptures, is the gospel of salvation. And Dave, uh, you know, I think this is wonderful. We're going to be dealing with this not just this week, but for the weeks to come, because it's such an awesome doctrine. All the aspects of it are just so wonderful, because it's what Christ has done for us. Last week we talked about the the gospel, where it came from. Some say today, well, this was just an idea, a teaching that these people made up who followed Jesus, and it's basically man-made, man man produced but we know from scripture that's not true first peter 1 20, 21 tells us he that is jesus indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world that is foreordained to be the sacrifice for our sins right he's also called the lamb slain right. from before the foundation so, of the world last week we talked about prophets <laughs> how that was a testimony, a testament to how the gospel, uh, the word of God, had to be exactly that, had to be his word because of prophecy. These are proofs to that effect. But it's awesome to consider that the gospel of our salvation was in the mind and the heart of God before creation. What we want to do is explore as much about the gospel that we can, and some very basic things. Before humanity was created, it was in the mind and the heart of God. This wasn't something that he was trying to solve. Oops, we made creation. In Genesis it tells us, it is good, it is good, it is very good. And then something went awry, and now he's got a problem on how to figure it out. That's not what Mm -hmm. the scriptures testify to. The other thing is, what does the gospel do? Uh, We want to get into a practical aspect of what God has done for us and how that affects us eternally, temporally. What does the gospel do in terms of our lives? Well, we quoted last week Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10, for by grace are you saved. So it brings me into the grace of God and creates a real gratitude on my part for that God would, would forgive me, that he would save me. By grace are you saved through faith, and that, you know, it causes me to believe God. Now I'm trusting Him. And that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. So again, I, I'm very grateful to God because He's given me a gift that I couldn't pay for. By grace are you saved through faith that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So I've been humbled. I've come to realize that there's nothing that I could do. And I'm not trying to please God in order to get to heaven I'm not trying to prove to God you know that uh, sometimes people when they when they pray and we don't really confess our sins say Lord I'm sorry I did that but it's almost like we're thinking yeah but just give me another chance Lord and I'll show you that that's not the kind of a guy I am you know no I've been humbled it's a it's by God's grace and by God's mercy it's a gift that, that I couldn't earn but it says We are created in Christ Jesus unto good works. If any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. I mean, I can remember, oh my goodness, 60 years, coming up 60 years since I opened my heart to Christ. And I can remember like it was yesterday. There was a transformation in in my life. I had been... uh, well, I'm, I'm I'm almost ashamed to admit it over the radio, but but I was kind of a difficult person. I'd been in, in at least a thousand fights, probably more. And this was the summer before I entered high school. I mean, my life has completely changed. I remember when I stood there and let some guy hit me because I I just couldn't in my heart. It was my fault, and I couldn't double up my fists and and go after him. And and the guys that saw that were just absolutely astonished. I remember the night that I was saved for the first time in my life. I wasn't afraid to die. In fact, as I almost wished that I would, so I would meet the Lord that I now loved, and I had and I had just met. He'd come into my into my heart. So when we're born again, 
there's a transformation that, that you can't escape with. I have a new hunger for the Word of God and a, a new understanding uh, of the Word of God and a desire to tell others. There is a complete transformation when we really meet Jesus. Mm-hmm. We quoted this last week. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation for all those who believe. Mm-hmm. And even the believe part of that, I mean, that that's another demonstration of God has to be involved. Because if this is something that truly we can't do, God has to do for us. Right then even the way in which we receive this has to be so unique that it covers everybody, from the youngest, from those with learning deficiencies, those with brain damage, those... It it cuts through all that. All they have to do is believe, and only God could bring that. One of my favorite examples out of the scriptures is the thief on the cross. Mm -hmm. What could he do... Tied to that cross, what could he do? Nailed to that cross. Right? The thief was nailed? Right. I think he was. Do you? Okay. Yeah. Well, yes, that's what they did. That's what crucifixion was. Mm-hmm. But what could he do? Well, he certainly had nothing to offer to God. Right. He didn't even have a life. He couldn't do any good works. But he could receive as a free gift mm-hmm. salvation from Jesus Christ. And he apparently understood who Jesus was and that he was dying for his, in his place for his sins. And what does Jesus say to him? This day, mm-hmm. I mean, the promise of salvation from the, the lips of our Lord and Savior right then and there, absolutely incredible. Mm-hmm. This day you will be with me in paradise. The man believed. Mm-hmm. To me, that only God could come up with a solution, not just the solution of salvation in Christ, mm-hmm. but the method of receiving mm-hmm. the solution that to me is miraculous. Not a word about purgatory, by the way. Not a word about baptism, by the way. Or or good deeds, or church attendance. No. Uh, it was... Or, or uh, a saying, well, I'm going to do better. Right. There's nothing we can do except receive him. The slate was wiped clean. He was forgiven of his sins because Christ paid that penalty. And we have to come back to that and keep coming back to that. And because we can become very sentimental about the physical sufferings of Christ on the cross, mm-hmm. but thousands were crucified, suffered on crosses. That wasn't what Jesus wept, by the way, and sweat, as it were, drops of blood in the garden. Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Mm-hmm. Uh, thousands were crucified, and I'm sure a lot of them gritted their teeth. They wouldn't give those Roman soldiers that were pounding those nails into their hands and feet, they wouldn't give them the satisfaction of a whimper. They were going to go down, you know, in defiance. Jesus could bear the physical pain. That wasn't uh, what he was concerned about. It was that he would be made, so the Bible says, that he who knew no sin was made sin for us, that he would become the very thing that he hated. He would be as though he were sin itself. He would be punished for the sins of the whole world and pay the penalty that his own infinite justice demanded. And that's what his holy soul shrank from. And that's where our salvation comes from. It's through his payment of the penalty. It's not through the physical sufferings that he suffered. And and again, we have to get back and hammer at that, because otherwise, God can't be just and forgive us. Please visit our website, thebereancall.org, to access our radio archives going back to 1999 and our newsletter going back to 1986. We offer daily updates by email or visit us on Facebook or Twitter. Are you looking for information about a specific topic? Go to thebereancall.org and click on Topics at the top of the page. Our online store is thebereancall.com. We offer a wide variety of books, tracks, CDs, and DVDs. Note that most of our eBooks are free. I'm Gary Carmichael. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope you can join us again next week. Until then, we encourage you to search the Scriptures 24-7. Don't go with me.
I still will follow, no turning back, no turning back.